Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. It is a pretty well-known fact that on my channel, I have done a lot of paludarium builds. Semi-aquatic environments like that are my favorite to work with. I've done the raining paludarium, jungle paludarium, mossy frog drip wall paludarium. We got the axolotl paludarium right behind me. And even before I started doing YouTube, I had done probably 20 plus paludariums. Now, with that being said, I have never really made a true nano paludarium. I've got the nano jungle paludarium and the raining paludarium. They are on the smaller side, but I wouldn't consider them to be nano paludarium. So I think it's about time that I challenge myself and make an actual nano paludarium. I have gotten this request a few times from you guys actually for me to make it and I'm finally gonna commit to it and I'm gonna make one. So let's make one. So the first order of business is to actually take a look at the aquarium that I'll be using. And I don't actually have one, so video's over. Thanks for watching. Thank you all for watching this here video. No, I have a bunch of extra glass sitting in my garage that I've had from leftover projects and whatnot. So I am going to make my own. I do have some experience building tanks for the nano jungle paludarium. I did build that entire enclosure and then I had the uh, rain chamber for the raining paludarium a few weeks ago. But before we do anything else, we need to build an aquarium. So uh, let's take a look at the glass. Okay, so here's my glass. Uh, this is all I have, so I'm gonna have to be really creative here and careful and make sure that I don't actually like ruin any of the pieces because again, this is all I have at the moment. Oh, I'm kidding. This is what I actually have. I have an entire 11 by 14 pane of glass and then I have another little scrap piece that's slightly smaller than that. And then I have this random piece that I don't even know if I'll use. So here are my blueprints. As you can see, I am an artist. These are quick little sketches I made just to get the, uh, you know, the general size and shape of them. You'll realize there's two. I haven't fully decided which one I want to do. I want to do a vertical one and I want to do a horizontal one. What in the world is going on out there? Anyways, I think for this video, I'm going to use the horizontal one and then maybe I'll do something with this one in the future. You can kind of see from my very detailed sketches how it will look and it's not confusing at all. So we're going to kind of have this this back piece right here. It's going to kind of, you know, be the back piece and then we'll have the bottom and then the sides. And then instead of doing a full paint on the front, I'm going to do a half paint. I think made out of this stuff, just kind of like that. So it's uh, time to cut the glass. Well, that sucks. Uh, yeah, cutting glass is hard. Luckily, it's not right on my line, and I think I will still be able to salvage it. So, uh, let's finish getting this made and forget our past mistakes. Okay, so all the pieces are cut. Luckily, I had enough. Um, the next thing I need to do is I need to apply some painting tape to the edges of these, and then I need to go over each piece of this with some isopropyl alcohol. That way I can get all of the dirt and debris off, and I will get better adhesion from the silicone. And then I will tape up all the pieces together, build the whole thing, and I will let it sit for 24 hours, and then we can move on to the next step. So it's time to finish this thing up, get the tape on, and uh, let's do it.
Okay, the aquarium is all complete. I think it looks pretty good. I'm gonna do a little bit of sanding around the edges just because they're still a wee sharp. And so now we just gotta let this guy sit for about 24 hours and then we can continue with the project, so. Okay, tis the next day and our uh, aquarium is all cured and everything. I really like the size. I think the vertical one too will be a cool size, but for now we gotta worry about this one. So I'm gonna remove the tape and then I gotta do a little bit of sanding on the uh, edges. I'm gonna just wet some sandpaper um, and then we can move on to the next step. Time to untape this thing. Okay, so here is our aquarium. It looks pretty good. It's super dusty right now because I've been testing out some scapes, but overall it looks pretty Pretty good, I sanded down the edges a bit so they're not so sharp and I won't get cut. Um, but the next thing we need to do is scape it now. I've got some materials here, including some dragon stone, just cause I felt like that looks the best with it. And then these little pieces that I broke off from this piece of tiger wood that I used for, well, I didn't use, but got it when I got the other piece of tiger wood for the raining paludarium and this piece just didn't look the greatest for that project. So I just broke off some pieces of that and we're gonna use those. And then I also cut a little tiny piece of Universal Rock's background from the Axolotl uh, Paradise Tank. Um, I had a little bit extra and I'm going to use that as the background. And that's why I think that the Dragonstone just looks the best with it because I feel like they just, they blend the best and I think in the end it'll just end up looking good. So like I said, I have been testing out some scapes, not, you know, very detailed ones, but just kind of the general idea of what I want. What I kind of want to do is create a little rock formation over here on the left that kind of almost looks like, um, kind of almost looks like a tree root, like tree roots are kind of growing over it and then kind of down into the water. I want to create like a natural slope towards that direction. And then I also want to try and have, you know, maybe a few pieces that are kind of coming up this way and just kind of give it a little more depth and whatnot. So I got the materials here in order to permanently attach this. I'm going to leave it loose for now, but I think I'm just going to use some super glue to attach it just because, I mean, it fits pretty well and with the scape in there, it shouldn't move, but I'm just going to super glue that in place and we're going to get scaping. So the first thing I started to do when scaping was I started by building the rock structure with just a few simple pieces. And then I started testing out some of the branching effects that I wanted. And at this point, the scape was like super wiggly. I was getting a good branch structure and I liked the way it was looking, but I just, I couldn't go any further because it was too wiggly. So I decided to permanently attach the scape together using some cotton balls and super glue. This creates, you know, a super strong bond between them. Um, that way everything will stay put and then just put a little bit of sand over it just to make sure that it's all pretty. And then I continued along with the wood. So um, enjoy. <music> Soak, our scape is, well, not entirely finished, but mostly finished. It looks pretty rough right now. I'll be honest, this is one of the more frustrating scapes I've worked on. I only showed maybe like a minute of actually um, scaping this, but this took me like three hours, which is ridiculous, but I do really like the way it's looking. Um, it's got that, you know, that kind of like rooting look that I wanted. I just want to add a few more little details to it. I've got some more sticks and then obviously the smaller stones, but I have everything super glued right now. You saw me use the super glue and then the little cotton balls. So I gotta let this dry and then I will continue working on the scape and then we'll get on to the other things we need to do, so. Okay, so it is a little bit later the next day because I had to go out to get some plants and the super glue didn't dry completely, so I had to let that sit overnight. And then I also had a dentist appointment, so the entire left side of my face is numb. But luckily I can still talk and I can still do this video. Anyways, um, the background is now, uh, not silicone, but super glued on. And then our scape is finished. It's all glued together, so it's one whole piece now. So, next thing that we need to do, we're actually almost finished with the project. I need to put some substrate in here. I think I might lay this down first. It's such a small tank, it's not gonna need any um, like egg crate or anything to distribute the weight of the stones. But I think I'm gonna put this in first and then we'll go in with the substrate. So, uh, let's take a look at the substrate. So I was originally 
originally maybe planning on using some of this stuff, which is just some like sand, the same stuff that I used for the axle oil tank, but I don't really like the color of it. It's like super saturated. So I'm actually gonna use just some play sand. I'm kind of wanting to go with like a, a more like fresh water look for this one. I don't want to make it so like tropical, I guess. I really want it to kind of feel more like a pond or a river type deal. Um, I just, I like the feel of that right now and I think it'll end up looking the coolest. So we're gonna go with the substrate, get the scape in, continue with the project. So the scape and the substrate is in place. I think it looks great. I mean, everything blends pretty well so far. Um, now, if you remember from earlier, I have some of these smaller rocks. I'm gonna go in and just, you know, do the detail work and then we can move on to the plains. So um, let's rock. So now that we have the scape completely finished, you can see all of the tiny little rocks in there. They're kind of hard to see because they blend so well with the substrate. But yeah, with that done, the next thing we need to do is uh, look at the plants. So for this project specifically, I have a rabbit's foot fern. It's a little big, I might trim it up a bit. And then an ivy to just, you know, help with some of the smaller details. This other little ivy that um, I might use, I don't know, I've, I just from another project. So we'll see if I have a use for it. And then I have some ficus that I'm going to use and then some moss. I think it'll look so much better once we get the plants in place. It'll just help bring it to life and then we can start to fill it up and whatnot. So I'm going to prep those. I think the last things I need to do is, I mean, really just add the plants, add the moss and everything and then get it filled up. So I think we're, we're on the home stretch here. So let us finish the race. Hey there! Uh, as usual, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you guys for watching this video. I honestly really, really had a fun time with this one. This is one of probably the funnest projects I've worked on in a while, really. Um, you know, there were parts that were challenging, but I like the challenge. You know, it helps develop my skills and just, you know, helps me learn new techniques. And I liked challenging myself. You know, like I said, I've made stuff like the Nano Paludarium and the Nano Riparium, but like never really anything this small. And personally, I think it turned out great. It's kind of harder to see from here, but like you saw those shots, it's a pretty cool project. I definitely want to work on another one with that like vertical um, look. So I'm going to get that going here in a bit. Also, like I said, you know, semi-aquatic environments have always been kind of my specialty and like the thing that, you know, like that's kind of what I started off doing um, when I started this hobby. And that's kind of the thing that's just clicked with me the most. But that's going to be all for this week. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe if you haven't already. Go check out last week's video on the Orchid Terrarium. I'll see you guys next week.